Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. As the transition to renewables expands, so does the excitement for graphite exploration. And today we're exploring sell on graphites here, guys. We're going to dive down into the properties. Joining me is CEO Donald Baxter. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much for being here, Kyle. Appreciate Us. that. Such a pleasure. So before we kind of dive down into these each individual properties, they're all kind of encompassed within Sri Lanka. And I got to ask yeah. you, how'd you guys end up over there? Well, it was the company was formed before I joined. Um, I came on initially as an independent director because of my background in graphite, uh, mainly flake graphite. But um, uh, I soon, uh, about a year and a half bit into the pro process, I, I joined. I, I, I let the uh, the CEO, former CEO, retire, and uh, I stepped in because I had been CEO of a graphite company before, so it was a perfect fit for me. So Sri Lanka is something I kind of inherited, kind of a pleasant surprise, let's say. Um, I was actually just there in August. Um, again, quite pleasantly surprised with Sri Lanka as a whole. Compared to places I've been before, it's a lot more advanced than, say, Madagascar or some of the other African countries I've, I've been to. So um, happy with that. Uh, Sri Lankan vein graphite is very unique. And then it's a lot more crystalline than than um, uh, than flake graphite, and the only place it occurs is Sri Lanka. So the one thing that I discovered too is at one point in time, Sri Lanka produced most of the world's graphite. So there's a history there. Um, it tapered off after around the Second World War, but at one point I learned uh, about three thousand mines were operating in Sri Lanka. So. We're looking to gradually start to replace that number, maybe not 3,000, but we'll definitely have 20 or 30 mines hopefully running uh, in order to meet this incredible need for graphite for batteries. That's awesome. So as you guys kind of get into the infrastructure down there, can you kind of touch on what it's like and how mining friendly of a jurisdiction this is? Because I don't believe they allow what open pit mining. So you guys have to kind of go in and get that stuff out. Can you kind of just touch on that a little bit? Exactly. And the thing is, from today's today's overall environment for mining and, and, and the use of secondary products and, and getting into green energy and whatnot, the whole ESG factor is, is huge. So talking, no matter if you're talking to a, an OEM or, a, or an investment fund, usually the first questions they ask you is, what's your ESG you know, policy? Um, so the good thing about Sri Lankan, my, I see it is, again, you don't have that um, need for a, a large open pit area, a large area cleared vegetation, um, which is good for us. So small scale underground mining is, is still quite cheap in, in Sri Lanka. So that's not an issue. Usually going underground, you're very, very much more expensive, but not in this case, they're fairly shallow. The veins do come to surface. So you're, you're chasing them down from surface, but you're still underground. Uh, but we're talking, you know, 200 feet, 300 feet. Um, some of the mines I've been in when I worked for Naranda, I was, you know, 3,000 feet underground. So a whole lot of different costs involved there. So the other beauty about, about Sri Lankan vein graphite, too, is that it's in the ground. It's 95 carbon. So compared to a flake uh, mining operation where you have to spend, you know, a couple hundred million probably on a primary processing plant, our graphite in the ground is ready to go to the next stage for battery processing. We don't have to take it from 3% or 10% to a 95 carbon um, to, to, for secondary processing, we're already there. So we don't have tailings ponds, we don't have primary processing. So again, from an ESG footprint, uh, it makes it a whole lot cheaper. So even if, even if for example, the, the cost was slightly higher for underground mining than, than open pit mining, it doesn't matter, you don't have the cost of the processing. So it's an off, very much offsets. So and Sri Lanka as a whole is extremely supportive of this. They're very keen to, to um, jump on this whole battery uh, process and, and, and take advantage of that. And I sat with the chairman of the Bureau of Mines uh, and they're very keen to get, you know, a couple hundred mines running in Sri Lanka try to, and try to take it downstream as far as anodes and even batteries. So they're very keen, very supportive. So I, I'm, I was pleasantly surprised by everything I found when I went to Sri Lanka. That's great to hear. Yeah, I think people are under anticipating the uh, the battery gold rush that's about to hit in the next couple of years. Is I think even one of the largest miners um, in China was saying that they expect a supply shortage by 2025. Um, if you don't mind, can you uh, kind of touch base because you do have these four property types here. Where are you guys at with these properties? What's the the time scope for getting uh, into production with some of them? Um, what are you guys finding? Well, we found first of all the first mine we have that's pretty much ready to go is K1. Um, and it is right now what we're doing is we're deepening the shaft. So it is actually a past producing mine. It mined graphite in the 40s. There's all sorts of underground workings. We're basically deepening the shaft by about 25 meters to get down into the heart of it. 
We'll also be driving an addict. Um, and the terrain is, is, is very amenable to driving an addict, which allows us to get into some meaningful production. We've had some small scale, uh, smaller veins in the upper levels, but uh, the miners in the 40s probably got most of that. So we're basically getting down with our, with our new mine modeling. We're actually working on, a, on an updated mine resource. Uh, so we'll have some better models, better long-term mine planning, short-term mine planning, uh, my technical team in Sri Lanka is excellent. They all have advanced degrees from Australia, from Europe, in geology and mining engineering. So I have got an extremely good team to bring us up into the modern, you know, mining, modern mining um, in order to meet, you know, meet the, the requirements today, mechanize where we can. Um, our second property, M1, which is again sinking a shaft or deepening the shaft, I should say, it's already sunk. Uh, again, driving an at it. Um, further defining, getting into cross-cutting to the veins. So we're getting ready to sort of really, really punch up the uh, the production levels. That's awesome. So, so what's the, the exact time frame when you're trying to get into these production levels here? Are we going to see some kind of uh, evolution in the last quarter of the year here, or is this uh, like a six to twelve month expansion? It's from when we're sat around with my technical team in, in the office trailer at, at K1, uh, we we're talking four months to be down to where we need to be. To deep deep in the shop. So we're just renewing an explosive license, um, which has all been slowed down by COVID. Yeah. The island actually is right now is shut down. Uh, the day I left Sri Lanka, August 20th, they shut the country down. Uh, nothing I did, but it was, uh, but then they um, ultimately, uh, they're still shut down. So we're, we're a little bit limited. We're able to do some work at, at, at M1. Uh, we're basically re replacing some shaft timbers and getting things ready for when we can uh, move forward quicker. Um, K1, uh, the mi minute that the lockdown ends, which is supposed to be October, uh, we start deepening the shaft, and that's three to four months before me me meaningful production. So that'll take us into the new year, but certainly not six months or 12 months. It's, it's four months, let's say, at this stage of the game. So that makes me uh, quite happy, and we have some other work underway in order to define the, the added access, which will give us you know, some meaningful production uh, uh, potential there. Oh, it's great to hear, Donald. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to touch on before we... Uh... I would actually, because the biggest thing, the biggest interest in what we're doing and what, why we're doing it is battery. So I'm literally writing uh, a news release right now of the, the results from our first batteries we've made at, at Warwick University in the UK. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, and it sort of further accentuates our need to, you know, show significant production out of out of um, Sri Lanka, but our whole story right now is a mine to battery. The interest in, and the demand for graphite is coming from processed graphite for batteries, and we're about to show the world just how good Sri Lankan vein graphite is in a battery. It's phenomenal. That's incredible. So maybe once we get that news re uh, release out, we'll have to get you back in here. Maybe exactly. We'll I wish I had it. I'm still literally writing it as we, as we, as we talk here. All right. We'll try, far, so. we'll try not to leak too much insider news here just yet, but uh, I definitely appreciate your time today, sir. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Stay cool. Stay awesome. And we'll catch you all next week. Cheers.